Are you ready to learn? Because my super experienced guests are ready to share some really valuable information. Make sure and listen all the way to the end to get help and support. So let's start with the best audio experience. Hello, guys. Welcome. Welcome to our show. Today we discuss about very important topic. It's interesting. You know, when I got this request with the topic, the importance of our words and the context behind them, I was curious. Wow. I want to know, know, know more about that because it's important today to use the right words. And I'm so excited to discuss this topic with Yogov Almak. How are you? I'm doing great, Anatoly. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, Friday. I love this day. You know, I got this feeling from school. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean that I hate Monday. My son hates Monday. <laughs> yeah, because he's in school. Uh, he told me Monday is the worst day ever. And I had the same feeling. But when you have a loving job, it mm-hmm. doesn't matter. You know what kind of day you have. Uh, Yoga, before we start, just tell more about yourself, experience, background, and why you decided to share with us about this important topic. So uh, my background, I started in just copywriting. So I, I got out of college. I, I applied to like 150 jobs or something like that. It was, it was an insane amount of jobs and I couldn't get anything. And I'd already had some experience working in, like, in marketing and tech. And I couldn't, couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting hired. So I decided to, to explore a little bit, see what would fit for me, what, what extra skill, what hard skill would be really, really helpful for me in my future career. And I ended up on copywriting. I took a course. Um, I took a handful of courses and then I started getting my chops. I started just working for different people. I've ended up working for, uh, for Peter Sage at some point. And we've worked for, um, uh, worked for a bunch of other fulfillment coaches, life coaches, uh, business coaches. Uh, that was really the start of my, my career. And at some point, I had met my business, my now business partner, John Romanillo, and we started to work together in the middle of COVID and we built our copywriting course, uh, Captivating Copywriting, um, arguably one of the best copywriting courses out there. It's like a, it, it's, it's as if, if you were to take a college level course on copywriting, that's, that's the level of, um, that's like the level that it's at. It's almost 40 hours worth of work. And the beautiful thing about that is through understanding copywriting more through teaching it to people, we ended up growing our, um, our agency, Wellspring Media. And I started to work more into strategy and, and market strategy, funnel strategy, creation. And the one thing that was a constant, the one thing that I always came back to was how much words matter. Um, Something I'm constantly telling people is that like your words, your words fucking matter. How you say it, who's saying it, and what you're saying. Those are the three things I need to be focused on because context is everything. And you can have the most fantastic funnel, the most amazing funnel, the most dialed in funnel. If the words aren't right, if they're not talking to the audience, if they're not connecting with them, if they're not, they're not creating some level of safety for them to like take down the bullshit meter and actually experience what you're, what you're going to try and and sell them because we're all aware. And and now in 2023, we all know we're being sold at any given point, but it's not about being sold or not being sold. It's about the comfort in being sold about feeling safe with it. Because when you give your money to someone, you want to feel like that was a good investment, that that was a that that was the right move for you. So your words are incredibly important because you can have again this most the most amazing funnel, and if the words aren't right, you're not going to make the sales that you that you want to make that you like are trying to achieve. You're not going to hit those metrics. You're not going to hit those milestones. Uh, it's we we commonly say, especially for something like ads, because ads is one thing that a lot of people are really really connected with with ads. It's the difference between getting like a, a, a one, one X on your return on ad spend and getting a five X on your return on ad spend. All right, mm-hmm. copy, good copy, like words that are gonna like mostly get there, you're gonna hit a one and that's fine. You'll get your 
your ad, like you're, you're splitting, you're, you're even. Your return on ad spend is one. But anything above that is like phenomenal, right? So you can get to five if you understand your audience, if you understand the way that they need to be spoken to and how they like to be sold to because every single audience is radically different. Yeah, nice. I agree. I remember like when I started my digital marketing career, it was in 2008. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at that time, uh, competition was so low. You know, uh, I got results by creating only e-commerce content. I didn't consider buying persona. I didn't consider a unique selling proposition. I just created text at scale, uh, got results on Google. Uh, but things change a lot. And uh, even today, uh, when you don't consider your audience, uh, you can't get results in marketing uh, because uh, people have choices. Google has choices what to rank, uh, even paid marketing, because uh, uh, I set up myself all uh, paid marketing campaigns uh, uh, because I paid like five, ten cent per click. Today, I need to pay like five, ten dollars per click, you know, a hundred times more. And uh, I can't get e even close results uh, that I had many years ago mm -hmm. because of level of competition. Yeah, just competition. And Yogi, I have the first question about uh, copywriting. You know, uh, can you tell how to uh, develop these skills, especially from scratch? You know, uh, I found many... Uh, clients uh, that I cooperate with them uh, usually uh, have no experience with writing. They mm -hmm. can get awesome products, high quality products, valuable products, but they don't know how to write. And I always tell them, without writing, we can't go ahead. Texts mm -hmm. are the most important element of any content. Google mm -hmm. ranks texts and uh, many websites like Wikipedia, Investopedia, many others, they don't create a nice looking design, but they have uh, great valuable text so for me text are foundation and the most important element of any content is text uh, and you know I, I remember this awesome book uh, written by jack london mm -hmm. Martin Eden, about the guy who didn't have education who didn't uh, have anything but he could overcome many great offers writers because of consistency uh, uh, of writing uh, can you tell how to do it, how to uh, improve writing skills if you start from scratch? Sure. Yes. So if you're starting from scratch, obviously the best thing to do is, is find someone who's done it, who you've seen do it before and does it well and learn from them. That's like basic, basic thing that we can, you can do. But if you want to do it on your own, yes, it will take time, but it will still, you will still have impactful results. So Things that I am always can, telling people to do is go out into whatever market you're in and just look at all the other people who are doing that thing and start to analyze their copy. Start looking at it, reading it, writing it, like rewriting it, start circling things like clauses and, and, and pieces of the text that you feel are very impactful or that made you feel something. Uh, because really copywriting and, and just writing in general is... We're, the, the goal is to is to work on emotion it's to uh it's to to elicit emotion and get someone to understand your point of view so that you can be on the same page and realize that the next solution whatever that solution may be whether it be to buy the course or to buy the supplement or to buy this product you know whatever it is to piece that all together you want to be able to like identify good copy identifying good copy is probably the most important thing that you can do at this point because identifying good copy is subjective, right? What's good for one person is not good for the next person. So everyone needs to be treated differently. Like you have to understand what good copy looks like for this audience, right? So you have to be able to analyze everything. So while you are also analyzing the text, you also need to analyze the audience. Who are we talking to? How are we talking to them? How do they like to be talked to? All of these things. Now you can make assumptions, especially when you were like looking at something like, uh, like Facebook ads. Like you can go into the Facebook ad library, type up company names, and then you can see how much they spent. 
Uh, you can see how much reach they had. And you can get an idea of like what the audience is. Like you can, you can look at like, the demographics and stuff. Uh, so really it's at, at its core, it's research. It's researching, mm -hmm. it's researching the words, it's researching the people because those are the two most important things, right? The words have to touch the people's hearts and the people have to want to buy, but we have to know who the people are in order for you to actually write the words that will sell to them. Um, another thing that I love to do uh, is watch great stories, read and watch great stories. So I consume a ton of content, a lot, a lot of content. But I don't consume just copywriting. I'll watch tons of TV shows, tons of movies. I'll read nonfiction books. I'll read fiction books. I want to get the most amount of like language in my head as humanly possible. And I want to analyze what makes a good story because at, at the core of copywriting, while it is selling emotion and selling, you know, like selling an idea at its core is a damn good story. Every single good page that you've ever read at some point in time, whether it was a 20 page copywriting thing or whether it was two pages, it all has a story directly or indirectly. And yeah. humans connect on story. Humans need story in order to pay attention. Because when we see just information, if it's simply just text blocks of information, you know what that makes us think of? It makes us think of school. It makes mm -hmm. us think of the textbooks that we were reading, just trying to, to condense all that information, get as much of that information into your head. And typically when, when we go to school, like I, there are plenty of things that go in one ear out the other. Like you just need it for the exam. And then after that, it's no longer important information. I don't, I don't need that information anymore. So I'm not going to store it in my head. However, with a great story over time, you remember a great story. You remember a, like, I can remember stories from five, 10 years ago uh, that someone told me just because it was a really, really good story. So at, at, at the, the main things that you would need to do in order to start from scratch and learn copywriting is research. Research the people, research good copy, understand the nuance of it, the difference between this copy could work for these people, this copy can work for these people, and then research stories. Dive into stories and, and start to just see patterns. Sometimes, you know, just to make it easy, just, just start making mental notes in your head when you're watching the next TV show, right? When you're watching, when you're at the end of the day and you're following along your favorite TV show, just take note of what's going on and what are the exciting moments? What are the moments that people are, uh, that you are really just in awe of? What, what are the, the oh shit moments? What are the, oh, I didn't see that coming? Or, or how are they describing the background? How are they describing the environment? How, is, how am I getting an understanding of this world? It's world building, that's what it is. And you need to do the same thing in copywriting. You need to build the world and build the ideas for the people to accept and agree with those ideas. Nice, nice. Yeah, valuable. Love it, love it. Okay, uh, let's talk more about emotions. Uh, you mentioned that mm -hmm. it's important to create this feeling with emotions and about storytelling. Uh, for me, you know, the best storytelling that I've seen uh, was uh, when uh, Tim Cook uh, presented a new Apple Watch. He didn't share a lot of features about this Apple Watch, but he shared three stories, how Apple Watch can decide people problems after watching this presentation i bought three pairs for me for my son for my wife <laughs> because these guys can me kill me if i buy only for myself <laughs> but you know uh, but you know after watching this presentation i got the feeling of owning this apple watch i got the feeling i need to have them because this smart gadget can decide my problems simplify my life improve the quality of life, many other things that I got in my mind. Um, and that was emotion, not logic. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, after that, I bought these three pairs. Uh, I'm interested about creating such feeling. You know, when you uh, uh, learn from storytelling style, you want to create your story, but uh, to unite with your product. Because, you know, uh, any product, uh, you know, uh, I know this, uh, how it's called, like, yeah, uh, brands don't sell products, they sell stories. So can you tell more about 
creating the right story that will cover uh, product features or benefits uh, to create this feeling of owning something. Yeah, so he, you, you kind of said it before that you bought it on emotion. And that's, that's again, that's like the main, one of the main things about copywriting that people kind of overlook. Uh, a lot of it seems to, so there's, there's a couple of different like areas where copy is put, right? So there's copy in like your VSLs, there's copy in video, there's copy in, uh, there's copy right here. It's cop like all of this on the back of this, uh, this box right here, this is all copy, but this is like informational copy. This is not meant to sell me anything. This is just product copy. Now, when we're talking about like the actual emotionally driven copy, again, we buy things on emotion. Humans buy first on emotion and then they rationalize afterwards. So that's why you'll notice a um, sometimes in, in old direct response marketing, when we saw those very, very long pages, the whole goal of that was to get someone emotionally invested. If you could get someone to stay on the page for longer, the likelihood of them buying becomes higher. Why? Because they're emotionally invested. They spent time. They spend energy reading the whole entire thing. By the time they get to the bottom, if they really like the product, even if they like kind of like the product, they're willing to give it a shot. They're willing to give it like, you know, to be like, yeah, I, I put emotional investment into this. All right, I need to now justify why this investment makes sense. Now, this is not happening consciously. No one is consciously doing like, I emotionally want to buy this. Now let me justify it. No, it's subconsciously. It's happening in the back of your head. So you're looking for the key things when you're reading through copy, you're looking for the things that will justify your purchase. But when the emotion gets put into it at first, that's what's going to draw them in. That's what's going to make the initial, I want this. So the way that we inject emotion into it is again, is telling stories, sharing things that are personal to us that are also personal to them. And a lot of that is expressing common, common emotions. So like fear, joy, excitement, um, uh, doubt, uh, sadness, you know, like you, you want to, there, there's an array of emotions that we can go through, but like when you're creating your story for copy, whatever, whatever piece that is, whether it's long form or short form, you have to know what emotion you want them to feel, right? So you have to go back to what your product is. Okay. What is your product? In your case, it was, uh, it's the Apple watch, right? And, uh, what were some of the emotions that you had when you were listening to Tim Cook, right? What, what, what was the, um, what were some of the things that came up when you were watching that? I, I got, you know, the feeling that I have them on my hand, you know, I got this feeling even, you know, uh, I, I felt like, Oh, okay. I can have this Apple watch. It's not only to know the time, but, I can check out my health. I can check out many other things, uh, SMS, email, anything, you know, even mm -hmm. to listen audio podcast, I can stop. Uh, yeah. Uh, m m many things. So I got the feeling that this Apple watch will simplify my life. Yeah. Sure. So there's an element of, uh, of control around that, but certainty, there's certainty in that, that this product is going to provide for me what I need it to provide. Uh, on top of that, though, is the underlying thing that Apple is always projecting with their brand and their storytelling, which is status. There is status in, in owning an Apple product. So now, now, not only do you have an organized Apple product that you can rely on, that can, that can like make you feel in control and make you feel um, like you have something that is of power, but now you have something that is giving you fulfillment because people with Apple watches are cool. People with Apple products are cool. You know, it's this, that it's that, it's that authority on it. And a lot of the times in the commercials and in their presentations, they, they, the way that they like put together those rooms is very perfectly set up to make it feel like this massive reveal, right? Even when we see like year to year, the products are only like changing this much we get super excited about it because they're setting the stage. They're, they're creating the, they're creating the environment to make you, to give you a little bit of anticipation, to give you a bit of like anxiety of like, Oh, what's next? What are they going to do next? And even if it's not fantastic, they're still like, that was great. They did it. They, they did it very, very well because Apple products are, are associated with authority and quality. So okay. 
if there if there you know if there's authority in it if there's quality in it there's status uh and there's there's certainty in the products because you know what you're going to get and on top of knowing what you're going to get you're going to you know it's going to produce in whatever way that you want it to that's that's how we're like setting up those emotions there you know, you're you're pre-framing in the beginning pieces so let's say um Let's use like a weight loss product, for example, right? So you want people to lose weight and you want, like you're selling a product that helps people lose weight. Maybe it's a pill. Um, and right now, most people, like when you're looking at weight loss products, there's, there's problem and then there's pain. So the problem is like the weight, right? So like there's, there's extra weight and there's, you know, like you're, you're not fitting into your clothes and. Uh, you're, you know, you're overeating and you're having all these struggles and stuff and that's fine, right? You can position the problem and that'll be very, very helpful. But what's going to really elicit emotion and move the person over is the understanding of their pain. The pain is not, I have 10 pounds and I'd like to lose them. The pain is I hate the way I look in the mirror when I'm putting on my new clothes. I hate the way it fits. I hate the way that I feel like, like disgust when I'm after I eat a whole entire pizza. Uh, I, it, it's this, this feeling you're, you're tapping into the emotion of the person of what, what is like the real pain because 10 pounds, you can lose 10 pounds and you can, can gain 10 pounds. And it's, it's almost like insignificant, right? Like it doesn't feel like it's as big of a deal, but disliking yourself because you're not, in, you're not enjoying the body that you're in. That's, that's real pain. That's going to push someone to do something. Uh, but I will say there is a caveat. When we are talking about pain, we have to do it slowly and meticulously. It's not, our goal is not to, to, jar, to be very jarring. The goal is not to, how we say it is, the goal is to poke, not stab. So in the beginning stages of writing, when you're pre-framing and everything, you're alluding to it. You're giving, you're giving like a sense of understanding of the pain and the problem. You're telling them, I understand where you're coming from. And more and more you get down the page, you start to like show it up a little more. It shows up a little more and a little more and a little more until you get to the point where it's like, where it's like excuse me, I don't like the way I look in the mirror. Do you want to stop having those thoughts? Do you want to change how you perceive yourself. Do you want to actually enjoy the way that you look in the mirror, enjoy the way when you wear your clothes? Are you, do you want to be excited to go to the store and buy new clothes? Not because you're buying a size up, but because you're buying a size down. That's, that's what we're trying to tap into. That's the, that's like the emotionality that you're getting into. And it's also important to note that when this is, this is a very big point for copywriting where a lot of people get scared at the, at this area because they don't want to be the person who's just like, taking jabs at the reader. And the reality is there is ways where you can do it where you're not taking jabs at the reader. Because when you're doing it from a place of understanding where you un where you see where they're from, where they're coming from, it's a very different concept. You're not giving them pain. You're bringing their pain to the surface so they do something about it. Yeah. The source of pain. They have that source of pain. You're just showing that you showing them that it's a lot more present than they actually are admitting to themselves. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> great. Great. Love it. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah, I agree. It's important to know customers. It's important to tell with their language, you know, to uh, tell how you can decide some of their problems. Uh, but, you know, one more thing that I found today uh, that a lot of content are boring. You know, uh, if we check out some data online, people, uh, I mean, like the average data, uh, bounce watching videos, 80% uh, of people uh, bounce for uh, in the first 20 seconds. Yes. Uh, people read only 5% of all books. So 95% uh, people uh, skip reading. Uh, uh, if we are talking about website content, bounce rate is high. So uh, because people uh, open content and it's boring, you know, it, it can be valuable, but it's boring. <laughs> so uh, and once I had the conversation with Jim Edwards and he worked in Business Insider 10 years 
he started on this company from scratch then company was sold for 500 million dollars uh, so and he shared secrets of business insider uh, that uh, this company can create non-boring content so if you are talking about business uh, most business books are boring you know uh, i love reading business books but most of them when i take them uh, they are good for sleeping you know when you have problems with sleep so you can take a new boring book you know to read a little bit <laughs> uh, you don't you can save money with medicine pills just take boring book uh, read it uh, it's hard to remember anything from this book but anyway can you tell about creating non-boring content especially for business niche okay entertainment industry i understand it's important it's a must have but for business and many other uh, niches like even weight loss you mentioned about this topic it's important to be non-boring any insights how to do it the insights of not to not to be boring so okay this is yeah there's this, this, there's this quote, and I, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to give it to Robert Downey Jr., but I know Robert Downey Jr. said it at some point. The way to be interesting, an interesting person, is to be interested, right? It's to, it, it's to ask questions. It's to be engaged. So the way that we can create content that's not boring to the audience is by not looking inward. It's by looking outward figuring out what not only what do they want to hear but get like stepping in the shoes of of your clientele like being really like cozying up next to your your clients and the people who buy your things those are the those are who who are important right like a lot of people will write and they write things to feel good about themselves right they they will write things uh because it makes them look smart because it makes them look intelligent makes them look like an authority but at the end of the day, that while that stuff is important, what's even more important is the connection that you have with the audience. So constantly create, like creating posts that are engaging with the audience. Hey, what do you want to hear? What are some topics that you want, to, want me to talk about? What are some things that, um, you know, that are coming up? What are some problems that you're commonly hearing? And a lot of the times, like a lot of what you're seeing on things like TikTok right now, a lot of the content there is call and response content. I make a post, people comment. I make a video on the comments of those posts. And those comments now become, it's now an engagement. It's, it's, it's a conversation between me and that person making the comment. And that creates a lot of engagement because it means that you're, you're open to being talked to, that you're, you're receivable. And once you start to get in conversation with your people and you can start to identify what the things they want, what, are, like what, what do they actually want to see? And then you can start creating content through that. And you're saying the bounce rate is 20% for, uh, for videos, um, for 80%, 80%. 80, 80% yeah. So the bounce rate is 80%. People are only watching 20%. Correct. Yeah. Uh, if, if they're only watching 20%, don't, the, the goal here is not to load all the important information in the 20%, but to seed enough good information and, in, and like engaging information within that 20%. So a lot of the reason for that 80% bounce rate is because people are making the under, like they're, they're getting to the understanding, this isn't for me, or this is boring. It, the only reason things are boring is because they're not about us. And that's the biggest issue is that if it's not about me as the, as the consumer, why am I reading this in the first place? It always has to be centered around them and their problems and their solutions and their wins and their falls and, and, the, and sharing in that experience. Because in most cases, when we create a company, we build that company and it's a reflection of us in some way. When people build these courses, these business courses, the reason why they built that business course is because they had the problem before and they solved it somehow. And now they're taking their solution and giving it to other people. But the thing, the little, the little note here is those other people have to be like you. And if they're not like you, they're not going to buy. On top of that, if you don't present yourself as like them, they will not buy. 
Mm -hmm. They need to find commonality. You need to have some sort of common ground with them. So what I do a lot is I'll talk about, I, I love movies and TV shows. So I talk a lot about my movies and TV shows. I share a lot about, um, on my Instagram, like I'll share a lot about tattoos and I'll write a lot, st- a lot of stuff that is around tattoos or around cute animals and stuff. And people now start sending me those things. They send me ta- videos of people getting tattooed. They send me videos of like raccoons that, that I'm creating this conversation. So the next time that I go to write something that I need to sell and I bring up tattoos, people are like, ah, he's talking about tattoos again. I like tattoos also. Let's have a conversation. Let's, what, what is he talking about? And then they see the thing and I somehow connect this idea of tattoos to selling copywriting courses or selling just marketing in general. And they're like, oh, I see that. I see how they made the connection. That's a weird connection, but those two things match. All right, I want to talk to him about it because he wrote a good post. I like what he said. That makes sense. Again, at the forefront of everything, the only way that you can produce interest is if you have interest in your audience and the people around you. And if you figure out what they're interested in, you will be interesting. You will keep people on your platforms for longer and you'll start to create the connections. Creating those connections will then make the sales that you're actually looking for. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, valuable. Uh, Let's talk about uh, the parameter EEAT, expertise, experience, authority, trust. Uh, You know, it's interesting that... uh, Many years ago, I don't remember exactly, like 10 years ago, I had a team of copywriters in my company who wrote about anything. You know, I, I uh, gave them like to write about weight loss, about finance, mm-hmm. any topic. They wrote, Google ranked, everything looked fine. Then things change many times <laughs> because Google is looking for content uh, written by experts. And it's not only about Google. Users want to get content from experts because for me uh, it's better to read uh, for example i don't know if i have headache yeah i'm interested to read uh, a copy from a doctor even yeah. with the worst grammar ever but uh, i need to decide my problem not copywriters who have no experience to write about medicine how to treat my uh, headache without understanding, without this experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, in in my course, uh, for example, Lily Ray uh, shares a lot of tips, a checklist, huge checklist, like uh, 50 points, how to uh, optimize for EEAT. Uh, and we spend so much time uh, by um, uh, creating lessons about uh, creating high quality content. And the main point, uh, all content need to be written by experts. Can you tell about how it's it's important today to know the topic? Because, you know, for example, in marketing, I often uh, promote websites in crypto, finance, forex niche. But uh, before promotion, I I, I learn about these topics. You know, I spend time like trader, like investor. Uh, I can uh, open demo accounts. I I can analyze how it works, uh, technical analysis. Because I know if I understand the basic, I can be successful uh, in marketing. But can you tell about writing, how it's important to know the topic before writing? Yeah, I, I would I would say that the most underrated and least sexy part of copywriting and writing in general is the research aspect of it. The research informs absolutely everything. It, it kind of, uh, I'll admit, it's not like the, the least painstaking process out there. It's probably the, one of the more grueling processes out there. But I, I want to I wanna take a little moment to look at it from a, from a different perspective of like the writers and the, and the, the copywriters of like the, you know, like the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Like they didn't have the computers that we have right now. They didn't have computers at some point and then they, they now they had they had computers and then like everything was in books you had to look for that stuff now you can go online and find the information sure you have to go through some of the bullshit information and you have to like determine who the you know who the authorities on the internet are but for the most part when someone comes to my company to, to wellspring media and they ask for a sales page or email sequences i don't write anything for the first two weeks first two weeks, I am, what I'm writing is notes on everything. I'm asking them about their business. 
I'm asking them about their industry. I'm asking them about their tone. I'm, and, and keep in mind, I'm asking them for all of these things, but on the other side, they're just sending me content. They are sending me content that they believe is important information. And I ask them to send me like pages and pages and pages and pages of it because I wanna, I want to determine whether or not this piece of information is important. If I'm starting to see that this piece of information is in this area and this area and this area, clearly that thing needs to be talked about. And research is, is probably the, the most important aspect of the writing. If you don't have the research down, you're not going to write to the audience. You're just not going to have, you're, you're not going to have a connection with them and all the work that you do, even if you write the most amazing sales page, even, even if it's like fantastic, like the right, the grammar is great. You make all these amazing points. It, it all pieces it together. If, if the research is not reflected in the copywriting and the research that you did is not actually talking to the people that you're trying to talk to, falls on deaf ears. Does not matter how good it is. I can write the most fantastic assemblance of words. If it does not connect, if, if the research that I've done is wrong and it does not connect to the audience that I'm talking to, my, my content will fail every single time. And I've learned that lesson a long, long time ago, it was like maybe like five, six years ago. And I, I'm constantly telling people to do the research, do the research, do the research. And a lot of times people, you know, they'll, they'll be reluctant. They'll be like, all right, fine, whatever. And they, you know, they do the research and they're like, yeah, it's good, whatever. But I've had moments where I've had people that I'm training, like clients that I'm training. A couple of weeks ago, I was talking to someone about it and the person I wanted him to write a couple of pages. He'd done so much research though. He'd written nine. He'd written nine pages. And all I had to do was go in and fix a couple of grammatical things for him. And I looked at him and I was like, how, how did you write nine pages so quickly? And he was like, the research was just fantastic. Like I just did all of this research. I went on Amazon and looked through the reviews. I went and did this. I went and did that. I went to this source and that source. I took all your notes. And I was like, Really? You did all of that? Yeah. And you wrote nine pages. Yeah. And it looks like this. Yeah. I was, I, I wasn't, I, I wanted to say that I was dumbfounded, but I wasn't because I knew exactly what was going to happen if you did the research. I just didn't expect him to actually do the research. And I, at the end of it, he had written something that was like 80 to 85% there in terms of fantastic copy, like truly captivating copy. And I, I've asked him, I was like, can I get like a, can, can I get you on camera saying this, that like research is the most important aspect and that it's, it's sped up the whole entire process for you. He's like, yeah, of course. Okay. It's, it's that important. I've, I've had, I've had to write pages for supplement brands and it's taken us a long time to get it down. But the reason why we do it is to make sure that all the information, especially when we're talking about supplements and ingredients and making the right claims and making claims that you're not allowed to make and all that, it was so important to get it down that the client was so happy that we, with the final result, they were like ecstatic with it because I, I didn't, when we took it through the compliance team, they had nothing to say. They, they didn't strike down like seven or eight different things like a normal compliance team does. And they were like, wow, you just sit like, you took an extra two weeks, but you saved about three weeks in compliance issues. It, there's always a trade-off. You do more work in the beginning so that you can do less work on the, on the tail end. Nice, nice. Yeah, uh, I can't avoid one topic, uh, AI, because uh, that was simple to ignore, hard today, impossible tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, But uh, for me, AI is the best tool ever but rewriting tool not writing tool you know so uh, even my website uh, we have this tool uh, our tool is different from what we have online because everything what you need to do just to add your website and get written text for uh, all website pages uh, so everything what you need to do to edit them but without editing you can't get great results 
uh, AI can't help you. It's not golden button. Uh, can you tell how to use AI today? Because I see when people overuse AI, chat GPT, other tools, and uh, your tips, how to find way that AI will help to increase speed, but uh, wherein you can create uh, something new, valuable, creative stuff. Because uh, I think um, if you get generic information that just rewritten, even with the best grammar, nobody cares about that. Any tips how to use AI today? Yeah, of course. I I've been I've been having a lot of conversations about AI. I actually wrote an article not too long ago for Digital Marketer about this. And with any new thing, any new innovation that comes into a market, whether it be like typewriters replacing pens or cars replacing horse and buggies, everyone thinks that the world is going to just fall. It's just like the, the sky is going to fall out. Like it's just we're, like the whole world is going to end. And like, this is the end of this industry. And so many people are going to lose their jobs and, and like your job is next. And people love the whole doom and gloom thing. I myself as a writer, as a, as a market strategist, as a copywriter, as, as someone who works very deeply and very closely with words and the context behind words. I love AI. I love, I love chat GPT. It's very, very helpful for me. I, I think the most important thing about it is understanding how to prompt it, knowing what you need to eat, what you need it to produce, how to tweak the production, and then taking it by yourself and editing it afterwards. It's there's it's three simple steps, right? So you have to learn how to prompt the engine, right? You give it a you give it a general question or you give it a general prompt, it'll give you a general answer. So you ask it to write an outline for you. It's going to write an outline, but it's going to tell you in bullet points what is going to be in this section, not what's actually in the section. Okay, well, that doesn't help me, right? Like, it doesn't help me to know that, you know, this bullet point says, all right, we're going to give an introduction to this, this, and this. We're going to do this, this, and this. We're going to do this, this, and this. Those are just steps. Those are not, that's not an outline. That's not the outline that I was talking about, right? So what we use it for is we'll use it to write a, a standardized outline for, and we'll actually have it do some of the research for us. So if I have, uh, let's say a, like a new supplement company and they have all of these different uh, ingredients in the supplements, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it give me an explanation of what the ingredient is. I'm going to ask it at what level, you know, so if, if it's, here, what's, what's in the ingredient? What are the benefits of the ingredient? Where do I find this ingredient? Okay, fine. It's going to give me all of that. All right. That's basic information, but how do I make it better? Right? Well, I know that I'm talking to this type of audience. I'm talking to an audience of people who are 35 to 42, right? All right. Well, how, in how, how much do they know about this product, about this ingredient? Not much at all. Are they scientific people? No, they just want the product. They want to help fix the solution. All right, well, they need information about the solution. So what am I going to do? I'm going to ask the engine to rewrite the, the ingredients or what's in, what, what is the, the benefit of the ingredients or what's inside it or like, where, you know, like the, the founding of it and all that. I'm going to ask it to write it in conversational language, language that a seventh grader or an eighth grader could understand, something that's not going to break the brain. Okay, fine. Now it rewrites it. Okay, great. Now I have this under, like I have this. All right. Well, now what do I want? Well, I need tone, right? All right. Well, what does this brand sound like? Does it sound like any other brand? Can I get an example of what other brands? Oh, well, this other brand speaks like this and we really like that. Okay. Rewrite this in that brand's tone. It's going to get it and change the tone. All right, great. Now I have all the ingredients. I have all the features and benefits of it. What's left? Well, Length, right? I need to figure out what length is, right? I, I need to get the most out of it so that I can, when I go to edit it, I can like shape, pare it down. You always want more from the engine so that you can pare it down and move things around because that's what you're going to end up doing at the end. So 800 words. All right. Give me an 800 word synopsis on X, Y, and Z. Great. Change the, change it to conversational language. Give me this tone. All right, no, I don't like this section right here. Can you flip this section to talk about 
um, talk about this specific uh, problem that people are trying to fix. Okay, great. And it will fix it. And you just keep going back and forth until you find something that you're like mostly happy with. Once you're mostly happy with it, most, a lot of people will then go, okay, that, that I'm just going to copy and paste this and put it there. That's not what you want to do. You want to take two days, two days away from it. That's going to give you enough time where you are not forgetting what you wrote, but you're not, your brain isn't on that topic anymore. Take two days, 48 hours, you go back and you start editing it. Read it top to bottom. Well, does this sound like the brand that I was talking about? No. Okay. Well, what, what fixes do I need? All right. Well, I can fix this. I can move this around here. I can take this sentence. This sentence doesn't need to be in here. This sentence down here I actually could move this up because it would make a lot more sense for how it fits into the page. All right. I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to save this for a content piece later because this doesn't need to be here, but it could be a good content piece leading to the page. And you start to just move things around and see how it feels. And if it actually, like, that is what's going to take it from, like, I, 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 I normally will say that AI can get a good 60 to 70% of the work done. Like, the, like the heavy lifting part, the, the monotonous stuff, the gathering of the information. Hmm. On the tail end of it is what you need to do, right? You may not get it to 100%, but if you get it to, like, 90, 95%, it's not bad. So you have to work from this like 65, 70 to 90%, you're only really doing 25% of the work for the most part. It's, it's not a whole lot of work, but it does require your brain. It requires you to understand the product, the people, and the positioning of it. So if you understand all those things, if you have this core understanding of copywriting, if you understand your audience, you understand all of those things, you can leverage AI to do a lot of the grunt work and then you tweak it so that you go from that like good to great. And that, that makes all the difference because in saturated markets, there, saturated markets, there are no real issues with saturated markets. When you join a market and if someone says it's saturated, what really they're saying is, I, I don't know how to stand out. I don't know how to make it really, really good. Which means that you're saying that you're at baseline. You, you sit in the middle of the, of, of the pack with everyone else. How do you get to the top of the pack? You write better. You have better offers. You, you don't compete on price because when you compete on price, there's always going to be someone who undercuts you. There's always going to be someone who's going to be a little less expensive. You have to show that your vet, like the product that you have is valuable and the way that you can express it's valuable and have creative ways to express it's valuable is through copy. So when you generate something with chat GPT and you have all the right prompts, you're in the middle of the pack again. Okay, great. How do I get to the top? You just use the foundational understanding and you get creative. You start to move things around and you stand out. And that's what will bring in like the proper traffic that you're actually looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Valuable. I love it. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, it's hard to be creative with AI, but you showed Another way, yeah. I need to think about that. I need to test. It's better to test, not to think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can have AI even generate ideas for you. You can have it generate like 15, 20 ideas and then run with one of those ideas. But you can have it run with the idea, but it, it, it'll only come better from you when you expand on it, when you really make it come to life. Because again, it needs human touch. That's the one thing that AI can do, but not fully yet. It's just, it's, 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 it's getting there, but it's not, it's not there yet. It's not, it, it doesn't understand nuance, mm -hmm. not nuance yeah. in the way that a human understands it. Context yeah. is everything. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. Yoga. I have the final question. Um, you know, I found that I usually get, uh, high results with clients who understand SEO. So if I can help them to get SEO results, uh, we can cooperate like a cohesive team now uh, because uh, they understand what I do. Uh, they understand the importance of what we need to do. It's the same uh, like weight loss. Yeah, you mentioned about this topic. 
for example, the best uh, specialist uh, experts can't help to lose weight if you don't understand why you need to eat healthy food, why you need to drink a lot of water, uh, train hard, uh, m- m- many other things. Uh, and uh, if I see my clients don't understand SEO, I tell them, okay, I have course. It costs like uh, 10, 20 dollars. So you can take this course to learn the basic uh, of SEO. Just uh, understand you don't need to be expert because people spend mm-hmm. many years, decades to learn, to craft these skills. But when they understand, we, uh, they understand all tasks because according to a few studies, um, companies implement only 40% of all recommendations. So, for example, if they pay like $10,000 uh, for consulting services, uh, $6,000 are wasted because they don't implement them. Uh, but when they understand the basic, they can hire experts and know exactly what they need to get. Let's imagine if you started today from scratch without any experience, knowledge, skills, what will you do to learn more about writing? What would I do to learn about writing? Hmm. I'd, I'd follow the people that, that like make me want to buy stuff. I'd, I'd follow those people and I just start analyzing what they're doing. It's again, it's, it all comes down to the research. The first step is finding, finding someone that does the thing that you want to do and that does it good, does it, does it damn good, and either ask them for, for mentorship, because I think mentorship is probably the best, the quickest way to get to point A, from point A to point B. That is the quickest way to do it. If you don't have like the money or that person does not allow for mentorship, like they don't give mentorship to people, the, the next best thing is, is literally to just analyze everything that they're doing, not to copy it. But to, to analyze it, to see what they're doing, why they're doing it, how people are reacting to it, it you, you have to be a fly on the wall. Like you have to basically sit there and look at it and go, what works here? And then test it out. All right, I tested this out. This is what works. It didn't necessarily work for me. All right, well, I have to keep into consideration this person has been doing this for a really, really long time and that they've built their audience. And because of that, it doesn't, you know, like the, the, it doesn't correlate exactly. Right. So like, just because this person gets 5,000 likes on their post, doesn't mean that if I write a post, that's exactly like their post, I'm going to get 5,000 likes. No, you have to analyze what they're doing at the foundational standpoint. Right. So just like, look for the basics, um, look at those other people. And then yes, like either find mentorship or take a course. Those, those two things. If you can find someone that understands the fundamentals, you can move in whatever, which way that you want. That's, it's, it, it's like a, in sports, every single time you have a coach saying, drill the fundamentals, drill the fundamentals, dribble skills, do, do dribbling skills, sit there in front of the goal, hit a hundred balls into the goal. Keep doing reps, practice, practice, practice. Everyone hates that. I will tell you right now, I know very few people who sit there and are like, I love just just taking two, three hours out of my day and kicking a ball into a net over and over and over again just to get this one motion down. But the people who like love the process, who actually like are understand what's going on, why they're doing it, and they like they sit through it, they find a way to love it. Those are the people who are fantastic at what they do because they've done it over and over and over and over again and they drilled the skills i think for for writing a lot of people will like take a course and in that course there are all these templates and they go all right well i don't i just need to learn the information basically and then just go to just just use these templates right well those templates are gonna like fizzle out those templates are gonna stop working at some point templates are fine but you don't get an understanding of why things are where they are. You need to under, like someone needs to teach you like a framework, like what we teach in our, not just in captivating copywriting, but to like anyone who comes in, in front of us, we teach this thing called the five part foolproof framework. It's the basis of all copywriting. 
If you have these five things in, in your copy, you've done it. You've done it correctly and you've done it well. And you can use that framework and move things around later on and create different types of copy and like create different understandings of copy. So like if you have, and this is, this is our thing, it's if you, if you position the problem, you paint the pain, sing the solution, disclose the data, and offer opportunity to overcome objection. If you have all five of those things, you've written a good piece of copy. And the way to make it great is by testing and modifying and, and doing it over and over again and then moving some things around. And then at some point, you write copy like it's no way, like you, know, you, just, you just do it effortlessly. Just it's, you yeah. know, it, one day it took five, six hours. Two months later, it's taking two, three hours. Because yeah. you have a framework, you have a system that you have in place that will allow you to expand and, and like do something creative afterwards. You know, the, the, the people who are sitting in front of the net, kicking a soccer ball into the, into the goal, doing it over and over again, that person after months and months and even years of training can now, you know, fuck around with their dribbling skills. They can hit, they can hit goals. They can like pick out the corner that they want. Uh, you know, like top right corner, top left corner, the, you know, like they're, they're picking their shot. That's what you do with copywriting. When you get the reps in, when you get it in so many times, you can now start picking your shots. You're now, you're now more effective and more efficient that you can just, you you understand the topic so well that you can move in whatever direction that you want. And the beauty of it is you don't like, unlike soccer, where something like that, where you would need to like constantly practice for years and years and years you can learn copywriting in like two, three weeks from a course, practice for maybe two, three months, and make a pretty substantial living off of it. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I agree. I couldn't agree more with that because I know practice is everything. You know, <laughs> without practice, you know, I see when people overlearn, they overlearn, but do nothing you know uh we have short memory we can forget about new skills for a few days i usually forget about new skills for a few hours i don't need a lot of time <laughs> but you know uh you remind me bruce lee when he told that he uh, doesn't respect a person who uh trains uh 10, different kicks but he respects person who train one kick 10,000 times so exactly. yeah you need to have patience to go ahead uh, step by step and uh, for me it's not like hate it for me it's more like enjoy the process if you love the process if you enjoy it then go ahead if you don't skip it find something else film videos uh, create tools because many things you can do it's not only about writing you can hire great writers uh, so it depends. Uh, uh, yeah, Yogov, it's a big pleasure to get on my show, to learn from you. Tell our audience the best way how to keep learning from you, how to take your course, how to reach out to you. Yeah, so uh, it's been fantastic being here. Thank you for having me on. Uh, the way you can reach me, I'm at yogev.almog on Instagram. And uh, that's a great, great way to, to reach me there. You can check out our website, Wellspring. We are wellspringmedia.com, W-E-A-R-E-W-E-L-L-S-P-R-I-N-G-M-E-D-I-A.com. Or to take our course, Captivating Copywriting, uh, you can go to captivatingcopywriting.com. And that is the sales page. That is a fantastic sales page. It is very, very long. It is intentionally very, very long. Um, it is a sales page about how to write sales pages uh, and in the sales page, they teach you about writing sales pages. So it's, it's this very meta concept of, <laughs> of like a thing and a thing and a thing. Um, but yeah, that's, those are the ways, those are the places you can, you can find us. You can also find my business partner at John Romanello uh, on Instagram, as well as my other business partner, Brett at brett.kaufman26 on Instagram. Okay, guys, you can find all these links in the description below. Listen us on Apple, Google, Spotify. Thanks again for your time. It's a big pleasure. Love all your valuable insights. So valuable. Guys, you need to follow on Instagram Yoga because you can see a lot of value. Okay, love you. See you.